Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. As you can see the CD32 is spinning away gleefully. Now what I'm trying to do now is try a few expansions with the Amiga CD32 and uh, to see if any of them work. And I can say that uh, most of what I have doesn't work. But anyway, uh, so what we have is Aronet's riser card in the back. We have Amiga kit. Uh, what is it? An 8 megabyte RAM expansion with selectable RAM configurations from 4, 5.5, and 8. Um, and this allows us to do um, a little bit of configuration messing about with the RAM. But, uh, but I'm not going to do that just yet. What I'm interested in is trying Aronet's uh, riser and CD1200. I'll start again. CD32 to A1200 adapter and see what we can connect in there. So one of the first things I wanted to try was the keyboard. Now it's a PS2 keyboard on the back. Now I've got a PS2 to USB adapter. It's a bit of a gamble whether it works or not. I can confidently say that it doesn't work on this particular keyboard. Now that's not to say it doesn't work, but just to say that this Logitech K120 might not be PS2 compatible. I don't know. I'll try another keyboard, but this one doesn't work. So we'll close that particular window. Now, as you can see, I've removed the tin shielding from the CD32. So we've got the CD32 adapter in there, um, which is allowing me, or, well, the A1200 adapter rather, which is allowing me to use Omega Kit's RAM. The riser card is there. I've put tape over the clock port connector as that sits nicely on there and we'll short it out so that's not very helpful uh, you can see the USB adapter in there which doesn't seem to be doing anything that just flaps about a little bit but there's nothing touching anything it seems quite happy so if I was to put that on square you'd have all kinds of problems so I'm not going to do that um, perhaps a little uh, redesigned by Ed would be quite helpful there. If you remove the clock port adapter and move the A1200 adapter along slightly you could put expansions in there for a 1200 and leave them in like this thing the 060 card that could go in you could probably get you could probably get the Apollo in there as well and with a little bit of jiggery pokey pokery you could probably get a power pc in there if you wanted to but uh, perhaps you don't want to so that's all i'm doing now i'm just trying these things and showing you how they fit the only actual card i've got that works in this system is the ram expansion none of those three cards will boot it just sits at a black screen for whatever reason whether it's power related or what i don't know um, I'm not sure if I've got any more A1200 accelerators. I shall have a look, but I don't think I do. I think that's all I have. Three is enough. Um, so there we are. So that's that. I'm going to show you... Well, I'm going to move the camera in a moment and show you the CD32 booting from a workbench disk I've just made. We'll try a few things on it, see how it works. See what difference 8 meg actually makes. So this will hopefully boot my 3.1 CD image I've just burnt I'm booting it from um, well it's quite nice booting it from a, a cold boot so you can see how long it takes to load up I've been, I've been uh, setting this up on an emulator oh there we go intuition is not being very intuitive right so we can close that now we're into a standard workbench. We have 8 meg fast RAM, 2 meg chip. Ooh. Now this is just a quick CD I've mocked up. I'll probably stick it on the website, on my website, so people can use it if they wish. So we have some utilities, which Amiga. 
I'll do a stream of this probably tomorrow or later so we can uh, you can see this in, in you know in better color see what Harry has to say we have a 680 20 at 14.2 megahertz AJ Lisa AJ Alice 2 meg chip and 8 meg fast RAM your computer is a CD32 it certainly is okay so let's do a, a standard system test okay pal five times faster than an A600 but so is walking um, yeah so that is reasonably fast it's uh, a big improvement on an Amiga 1200 2.3 times faster than a 1200 14 megahertz now that is quite an impressive jump in performance I didn't expect it to be quite so high to be honest uh, it's even faster than an A2500 which would have had a 68020 full CPU and fast RAM so either this card from a kit is very fast or the Akiko is doing quite a lot more for performance than people thought uh, memory we have 8 meg public fast run okay so there we go we can see that 8 meg certainly does make a difference now one of the things I saw a year or two ago was doom running on an A12 on an A start again on a CD32 I always wanted to see Doom running on a CD32 but I never thought it was possible because it's just too slow and it possibly is too slow but it's not as bad as I thought so we're running a Doom now which is probably the fastest Amiga version of Doom it's running Doom 1 wide the shareware version allocated four six nine six four oh eight bytes for zone management I don't know what that means I guess it means 4.6 meg mem free 6.8 the largest 6.8 so I wonder if this will run in 5.5 meg configuration I'll try that next I'll be interested to see if it runs in 4 meg I can't remember what the PC version of Doom ran on it may well have ran on 4 meg I'm not sure I do remember buying RAM some sims in the olden days to upgrade a 486 so it could play Doom smoother um, and I think just one one meg made a difference it took it from jerky gameplay to almost smooth gameplay not fast by any stretch of the imagination Doom was never faster than a 486 but um, less jerky anyway setting up heads up display usually you don't get a chance to read all this because it loads too fast it's a little bit slower loaded from two speed CD drive well I guess it's going to be 320 by 256 and there we go doom on a CD32 suggested retail plot price nine dollars that's someone moving their bin if you can hear lots of noise provided by ID free of charge okay here we go doom on a CD32 what a shame the keyboard doesn't work anyway um, 
Let's see what I can do with the controller. Okay, options. And should, we should be able to put it into the low, uh, low detail mode. Sure, what it's doing now. I've pressed the fire button, nothing's happening. This is many things, but fast is not one of them. Oh, what button's that? Blue, green, yellow, red, red. Right, my god, that was hard. Right, red button, let's put it on low. And let's reduce the, s the screen size. What is fast? How small will it go? It's still jerky there, isn't it? It won't go any smaller than that which is probably a good thing. Let's zoom up a bit. New game. Knee deep in the shores of hell. Um, hurt me plenty. So let's see how this goes. This could be particularly poor, but we'll see. Well, to be honest, it's not bad. This does bring back some memories. Well, it would have been full, full screen on my 486, but I suspect my 486 ran not too dissimilar to this. Anyway. So I don't want to show gameplay particularly because that's boring I can do a stream with the gameplay um, I'm not even sure I can get out of this now is there a menu button no there isn't there's no menu button on the controller which is a shame anyway so there we go that's doom on the Amiga CD32 the console that was never meant to run doom running doom so yeah, I'm quite impressed with that. That's purely 8 meg of RAM. Now I do have the option to add an FPU to that card, which I will do, and see if it makes any difference at all. Probably won't. Uh, but if I stick an FPU in, I can put a crystal on there and overclock the FPU. So I might be able to get some more performance out of it. So that should be a bit of fun. So I'm going to leave this now. Um, have, ex have an experiment with the RAM configurations, see what memory Doom actually needs to run on Amiga. I might try my other cards in as well and see if one of them might like to boot, but we'll see. Okay, that'll do from me. I'll see you in the next stream. Thank you very much. Bye for now.